I'm just uh, just having a quick look at my Jimmy Tibbs book. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, what I'm going to do? Somebody needs. Sorry, all you people who will be interested in me sending this Jimmy Tibbs book to you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to get you to send me answer to a question, and the first person who emails me the correct answer the first person who emails me the correct answer to this question uh, gets the Jimmy Tibbs book in the post sent to your door and the question is who did Carl Froch spar in Los Angeles, California, when he was with Mick Hennessy, when he was in camp as Howard Eastman's sparring partner. Sorry, 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 sorry. I've got I've got that wrong again. Hang on. Sorry, sorry. Um, no, because you'll get that easy. I've just told you answer it with Howard Eastman. Sorry. Uh, let me think of another Carl Frost question. Here we go. What car did Carl Froch buy after he beat Charles Adamo for Commonwealth title? What car did Carl Froch buy? They'll all be, uh, you'll all be tweeting Carl Froch. So the answer is what car did Carl Froch buy after he beat Charles Adamo? He went out and he tried his scent. To this car and he took a bit of a chase up motorway after buying this car about 150 mile an hour when they couldn't get the speed thing on him but they did get him further up the motorway after Birmingham because he were going from uh, Lennox Lewis College because he used to stop there with McCracken and he were going home one night late at night and in that car he had you could boot it up motorway and get home quick you know Nottingham's not that far from London is it once you go on M1 so what car did Carl Froch buy after he beat Charles Adamo for Commonwealth title? 2004, I believe. So, and the first person who sends me the email gets this fantastic book that I'm reluctant to part with. But you get this fantastic book in the post. Jimmy Tibbs sparring with life. Uh, with a forward by Barry McGuigan it's Jimmy Tibbs autobiography everybody knows that I'm a big Jimmy Tibbs fan uh, when I went to meet Jimmy Tibbs obviously I've seen him at shows and that but I never really got a chance to to speak to him uh, I've been in his company a couple of times and he always strikes me as a, a, a top bloke but like I said never had a chance to really have a conversation with him when I went to see him I was really nervous and I had a, like a knot in my tummy. I feel like when I met when I first got to know Frox. So we all have heroes, don't we, in life? But uh, yeah, big hero of mine, and it's uh, one on book off a bucket list. Isn't it? I can always say that I got to meet Jimmy Tibbs, and I like him. Now, right, let's let's go straight into into business here. No messing about. I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm going to go get another beer out of the fridge. Right then, here we go. Right, a lot of people have sent me a lot of emails in saying, Oh, Porky, you're very harsh on Eddie Hearn. Porky, you're a hater, you're a hater. You know, he's picking on Eddie Hearn, he's cool, he's big, he's number one. He used to be a boxer, did he though? So, what I'm gonna say is this, right? This is how I look at it, Eddie Hearn. 
did an interview with Coogan Cassius and his words were, and I quote, I was a 4 and 0 heavyweight as an amateur and he fought at Billy Ricky Boxing Club. Billy Ricky Boxing Club. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. It's not true. Billy Ricky Boxing Club. So yeah, we know where Eddie Hearn is, but we ain't ever boxed here. So if Eddie Hearn has not boxed there, who was it? Did he box under the name Eddie Hills? Now, there is a Eddie Ron Hills who boxed in the 60s for seven years as a welterweight, but that's not Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn's a 1979 born, born person, isn't he? So, 19 year on to that, that's what, 1998, there's no record of anybody called Eddie Hills or Edward Hills or Edward Hearn or Eddie Hearn. There's no record of anybody of that name sparring, uh, fighting at Billy Ricky Boxing Club in amateur fights. Now, Jim McDonnell was supposed to be the corner man for these fights. Jim McDonnell won't comment on it. Well, we know why, don't we? Because Jim McDonnell is going to need Eddie Hearn down the line, isn't he? He's in the boxing business, isn't he? He's going to need him down the line now. I ain't got a problem with Eddie Hearn. I've started the year thinking, do you know what? I'll do a video saying he's the number one. He is the number one boxer. The number one promoter in world boxing, sorry, but he didn't have four amateur fights, did you, Eddie? You know you didn't, Eddie, so why don't you come clean and say, I was just pulling your leg, I was just having a laugh, kooks. You see, the thing is, once you tell a lie, you've got to tell another, haven't you? Then another until it becomes huge. A bit like Tyson Fury donating seven million to charity. Once you put it on them and you ask them, and where's the money got distributed to? They just put barriers up. You don't want to talk about it, it's none of your business. But it was our business when you were telling about it, but once you delve a bit deeper, you can either shut it off or keep lying, can't you? Tyson's more or less shut it off. He's that big a star now. Nobody dare mention it, do they? Except me. But nobody can beat me any uglier than I am, can they? So we just have to keep it real, don't we? I say the things and ask the questions and point things out that no other YouTube channel dare ever point out. None of, none of them dare do it. I mean, look at this here. Let me show you something here. Right, let me show you something. Go onto your YouTube, all you people out there with a computer, go onto YouTube and just put a simple thing like IFL YouTube and then press on the, the videos, video selection. And this is what you've got, right? Am I subscribed to IFL? I must be off my rocker. Right, we've got Eddie Earn here selling fruit. Selling fruit in Hull, right, that's what we've got. And then underneath that, then you've got another video here, Eddie Hearn with Barry Hearn. Right, and if you click the arrow to right, underneath it, it says, why not keep up to date with us on social media? And it's got Coogan's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, that's good. That's good, they get social media. I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Instagram. Um, I don't do Facebook, it's just there to do upload videos. But it says, underneath it, you've then got, you see that? Underneath it, you've got a link for Sky, BT, Talk Talk, and then you've got Anthony Joshua, Links for Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Queensbury, and Matchroom now. What happened to being neutral? Coogan Cassius is the voice of the social media for boxing. He's probably the best interviewer out there. He has got 
a platform there that is unique. Him and James, what they've done is nothing short of genius. You've got to give them respect, whether James is involved or not. It's not, it's not to do with me, is it? Do I care? No. Do I like the channel? Yeah, I do like it. But I want to see them put some proper questions. This is why every now and then I have a billboard put up, don't I? You know, saying when are these people going to answer questions? Answer some real questions. They're not, Eddie's not going to answer proper questions, is he? But these people are not going to ask these questions, are they? Now that gentleman whose channel I told you about in my last video, that Michael, uh, I've got short term memory loss, let me just read his name out. Uh, here we are. He's called Michael James Adamesco. Michael James Adamesco on YouTube. Uh, Michael was going to, was at a, a press conference and he had a press pass and that and he was asking proper questions and they never give him another press pass and uh, that's why I like him because I like people to think outside the box I don't like people who are in this game and they're just hanging out at the back of people I don't I don't like that I've never I don't like things like that I don't like arse lickers that's what it is it's I call it arse licking now People, I understand they want to make a living out of this, but have some self-respect. Get yourselves in position and ask the proper stuff. Ask. Come on. Well, we're just going to have people running amok. Eddie Hearn's running amok, isn't he? For example, Bivol. We're going to put Bivol in with Bad Hill Jack. Why don't Bivol fight Biterbia? Why? Why don't they want to fight him? Bad old Jack's shot to bits, isn't he? John Pascal's beat him and he's shot to bits. I don't see him calling Baturbia out. Why isn't Callum Smith calling Baturbia out? Because he knows Canelo, there's more money. He don't want to fight at 175, Callum Smith. Joe Gallagher's words were too many bogeymen at 175 and it kills Callum Smith to make 168, 168 but tell it straight don't feed us bullshit that's what it is it's bullshit and i have a problem with it and that's what my channel's based on we're gonna root out all the bullshit we've got certain people coming out saying they do so many tickets and this and that no they don't they don't people lie people tell lies in boxing massive whoppers and it's up to me to bring these issues up. Now, if anybody's got a problem with me, just email me and we'll have a talk about it getting on the channel. That's what it's all about. We're all here for debate. We're not here to pan boxing because it's a fantastic sport. We're here just to point things out that that's not right, that's not right. For example, let me give you a perfect scenario. Dave Allen, a 9-0 and and a draw heavyweight young prospect who were with Dennis Hobson and he left Dennis named him White Rhino he ends up fighting Dylan White and Ortiz is that crazy Ortiz was an Eddie Hearn fighter and everybody thought he was going to fight Joshua when Eddie Hearn signed Luis Ortiz he was the WBA interim champion and ranked number one with WBA interim champion with WBA did Eddie Hearn push to get Ortiz upgraded for the regular belt? No. Why not? Because he's a two-time Olympian and a threat to Joshua. But did Eddie Hearn upgrade Scott Quigg from interim to regular champion? Yeah, he did, didn't he? But he wasn't a threat to anybody, worry. Do you see where I'm coming from? Luis Ortiz were a threat to Joshua, so what Eddie Hearn did, he cut him off before he were in a position where he had to fight Joshua. Now, 
Have you seen Lewis Ortiz in a ring with Joshua or Dylan White? No, you haven't, have you? We haven't, have we? But you put him in with poor old Dave Allen from Cunningsboro who lived at the back of me. Why is Dave Allen in a ring with him? 10 amateur fights and 10 professional fights and he's going in with a southpaw like Lewis Ortiz, King Kong. Massive puncher. Massive. He, he bashed David up. He was peeing blood. All his tongue were happening out like that. Like that. And you, IFL have got David in Lewis Ortiz as dressing room after and David's there saying things like you're a bad man and all that. He was like cheerleading him, like he like he were just privileged to be in that position. Do you know Dave Allen never got ten grand net pay for that fight, and he did it all in at a casino. His head must have been in bits. Putting a young kid like that in with Ortiz. Now I sent an email to Eddie Hearn after that fight and I let him have it both barrels. He never replied to me, but he knew my feelings on that. You've got Joshua fighting Eric Molina in his defence of his world title, and you've got Dave Allen fighting Ortiz, but everybody in the boxing family and the boxing circle were saying Joshua's going to fight Lewis Ortiz. And Dave Allen will be brought on steady, but Dave Allen were thrown in, wasn't he? He was thrown in with a lion and he was only a pup. I mean, God knows what that did to Dave Allen's confidence. Is Dave Allen crazy taking that fight? Yeah. He's got the brain the size of a pea. He's all right trying to be a tough guy, isn't it? But you've got to think down the line. I mean, he's already slurring that people say, don't they? I mean, I can't see it myself, but if he is and he's got damage, it's because of fights like that, isn't it? I have, a, I have a problem with things like that. Dave Allen against Lewis Ortiz. Why not Dave Allen against Dillian White or Joshua? Chisora, he doesn't seem to go near Lewis Ortiz. You know, all these people, I'm the can man. I'm the can man, anybody who wants it can get it. Well, I don't see that, I don't see that. I don't see it at all. I don't see it at all. People are saying that it's going to be Joshua Fury, Joshua Wilder, blah, blah, blah. No, it isn't. It's going to be business as usual, Joshua against your pool Fs and people like that, maybe Parker. They're always going to give Parker and, po and Povetkin fights. Povetkin is Russian, he brings Russian TV to the table. Parker brings New Zealand TV to the table. Them people are always going to get chances. Personally, Povetkin's shot to bits and... I don't rate Joseph Parker anyway. Chisora will beat in Dillian will beat in Dillian White in both fights. Fought Dillian White, shade at first one. The second one, he were losing, but he managed to pull it out at bag. I think Chisora's conditioning cost him. But Parker, I'm not a big I'm not I don't rate Parker that much to be honest. I thought you if you were schooled him. But he didn't get the decision, did he? But it's just one of them things, isn't it? But I don't want to hear bull. Bullshit. I don't want to hear it. This channel don't want to hear it. I get enough in emails, people panning me, but they don't. Then people can't even get to me now. I only read the nice ones. So I, somebody cuts all the bad ones off. So keep the good ones coming because I read them. Bad ones I don't get to see. But as regards what next for Dave Allen. February 8th, he'll be fighting that. Is he a Scottish guy? I don't know, he looked a bit tubby on the photo that I've seen. Is it Jay McFarlane or something? Basically, Dave Allen will blow him away. He'll huff and he'll puff. He'll blow him away. He'll go home then and eat 10 wagon wheels. That's what'll happen. But I hope he does win him, beat him. And I think the door's wide open now for Dave Allen to fight for a British title. And, and that's the belt that I'd like to see him with. Good matchmaker, and I'll get him a British title, but he's, he should have really took the Dubois fight, shouldn't he? If you're offered a quarter of a million pounds to fight Dubois, but you know you're going to get beat, you should be saying to your promoter or the people 
You should be saying things like, if I lose, are you going to bring me back? That's what you should be saying. But what happens if you beat Debar? What happens if you beat him? They'd be making films about Dave Allen if he'd have beat Debar. But why on earth would you ask for another 100,000 when you're getting your biggest payday ever? I don't get that. So it backfired on him, didn't it? And now we all know he's fighting on February 8th, don't we, for chump change, isn't it? That's bad, that, I think. Really bad. But let's get behind him and get following him. At David, the whiter one, I think it is, isn't it? On Twitter, get following Dave Allen and support him. You know, it's the Operation White Rhino. Is it is it eight point or something? I don't know. It's get behind him and follow him. All right, get behind Steffi Bull at Steffi Bull. Follow him. Get behind at Dennis underscore Obson. At I feel boxing at lead underscore right at J boy outlaw get behind them all and get behind this area for boxing all right Eddie's show February 8th that looks like a uh, an interesting show doesn't it our show is the Barnsley Metrodome 21st of February that's six week till fight week. So you've got six weeks to get your tickets bought, get in touch with at J Boy Outlaw or at Mickey's Athletic if you want tickets or get in touch with Barnes and Metrodome. All right, it's going to be a good night of boxing. There's going to be an announcement shortly regarding Josh Wales' opponent and it'll be a proper fight. And Josh has coming on strong now so people need to get behind him so all you people that are from the UK or other surrounding countries that follow me get behind Josh Whale because he's had no favours whatsoever in boxing they've done it the hard way he's a free weight champion that's bantamweight super bantam and featherweight a free weight champion 31 year old from South Yorkshire in Barnsley and he's on his way to winning a title, another title so get behind him uh, that's about it really The uh, we think we spoke didn't we about the Eddie Hills thing Eddie Hills 4-0 amateur career the point I'm going to finish off on here is if Eddie Earn fought as, as Eddie Hills right and his dad, Barry Hearn from Matchroom Sport, they have a production company, don't they? Are you telling me that their only son, Eddie Hearn, fought four times as an, as an amateur in the late 90s and it's not on any video footage? Are you telling me that them, them four fights happened? Because I'm telling you they didn't now. What you need to do, all you people who agree with me, just tweet him at Eddie Earn on Twitter and ask him, Eddie, where's the footage of these four amateur fights? It's simple. Just simple. Just ask him for footage. Ask him for the footage. People keep asking me to come up and fire the bullets on this channel as well. Find them yourself. Just ask Eddie Earn on Twitter. Eddie, where's this footage Are you? With these four amateur fights, your dad's a multi millionaire, multi soufly swimming in Cho Chai, but it's not on any amateur footage. Cause it didn't happen, it is a load of bollocks. There's bollocks and there's bollocks, and that's a load of bollocks, that's what we call it in Doncaster. A load of knackers. It's a load of knackers. It didn't happen, wouldn't happen, never happened. So what we need people like Coogan Cassius to do is ask Eddie. See Eddie, we spoke about it 13 months ago on IFL. Did you find that footage because we're still waiting? Now Frank Warren's had people checking history books. Bob Me checked as well. There's nothing on am amateur records to suggest that Eddie Earn went 4-0 as a heavyweight. 
Nobody's saying they were at the corner. No fans are saying they were there. Nobody at Billericay Boxing Club said it happened, but they do know Eddie Hearn. There is an Eddie Hills in the record books, but he were a welterweight, 1962 to 1969. He were a welterweight. Eddie wasn't born till 79, so I don't know who they said the Hills is. Eddie Ron Hills. Where's they said the Hills? Edward Hearn, Edward Hills. It's all the load of knackers. But nobody dare say a word. No, listen to me. No, I'm going to refrain from that. There's people in South Yorkshire that agree with me. There's people I don't get on with in boxing in the street area. And they're saying what I'm saying, but they're not saying it on the social media. Now, then people are tagging him in like they're his mate. <laughs> and then they're going around saying it's a load of bollocks. He didn't have a four and oh career. Look, it is what it is, isn't it? We all know, don't we? No one gets by old Big Porky. It's nearly, it's nearly as mad as Dillian White being offered over five million to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world at Wembley. That's nearly as crazy as Tommy Frank's team not taking a British title fight. I don't get that one. There's things I don't get, but I'm not frightened enough not to mention it. I'm saying, well. That ain't right. Tommy Frank not fighting Sonny Edwards for a British title. That ain't right. By the way, I didn't get a Christmas message off Tommy Frank. And that's what it does to you. Usually I get a Christmas message off him. But if there's something I see I don't agree with, I'll just say it, don't I? I'm going to say it. That's what I am like. I think that's not right. Do you know what I mean? If you're in an house, in somebody's house, and somebody farts, and it's a posh house, and you're a guest there, most people won't say oh, and I'll go who's farted that's what I'll say and people all well, why did you have to say that Russ I said well I could smell farts and that's what I'm like so if I don't agree with something I'm gonna say it I don't agree with that I said my bit I know what happened after I'm not bothered what people think I'm gonna say it Dillian White should have fought him should have fought Joshua Tommy Frank should have fought Sonny Edwards just how I am, isn't it? Joe, Sa Joe Calzaghi should have fought Clinton Woods. Dennis kept his part at bargain. The beat Glenn Johnson. Joe, Sa Joe Calzaghi ran a mile. It's all true, isn't it? He didn't want to fight Glenn Johnson. I ever pulled out three times. But that's another story. People do things for a certain reason. They say one thing and do another. That's a pet hate, pet hate of mine. Pet hate. Don't say you're going to do something to me and then don't do it. I don't, I'm not good with things like that. There's talkers and there's cheese and onion walkers. So, that's about it. All you people have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you get your porky fix. We'll, move, we'll crack on with this movement together. So I can't do it all on my own. I can only do it with the fans. Now, Looking at my engagement levels on the analytics on my channel, I'm very, very happy with how it's going. The percentages are off the charts. To see we've got us I've got a small group of people following me. I don't call it no, I've got a small group of people following me. The the engagement levels, what we're what we're speaking about now is fantastic. I'm giving you more than you're gonna get off most channels who've got access. They're asking a question, they're not giving you anything. I want to see these people on these channels give something. Not just stand there and ask a question. Are you ready for a fight? Yeah, I'm in great shape. It's my best camp ever. All right, then, blood law. That's a lot of crap. Start giving something and giving something back to the fans. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to tell you straight. But the channels have got back in now and we're going all the way. So... It is what it is, isn't it? It is what it isn't. We don't say it is what it is, we say it is what it isn't. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Stephen Davy at Plymouth as well. I hope you're well, mate. Keep battling on. Keep battling on, Stephen. You'll get there in the end. 
I promise you. I hope you're all right. I hope you have a good new year. I hope we're here this time next year, talking, saying that you're still back.